It's Survivor Series, the Thanksgiving night tradition, Hulk Hogan, Don Morocco, and Jake the Snake Roberts will be joined by the rowdy one, Rowdy Roddy Piper, as they tangle with Heenan family members, World Heavyweight Champion Paul Orndorff, Andre the Giant, Harley Race, and King Kong Bundy. Also on the card, Thanksgiving night, the Macho Man Randy Savage leads his team of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Ken Patera, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan into war against ravishing Rick Rude, Hercules Hernandez, the natural Butch Reed, and the One Man Gang. Tag Team Supremacy will reign as the Young Stallions Paul Roma and Jim Powers team with the British Bulldogs, Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid as they go against Demolition, the World Tag Team Champions, Axe and Smash, and the Islanders, Haku and Tama. And rounding out the Survivor Series elimination matches will be the Dream Team of Greg the Hammer Valentine and Brutus Beefcake teaming with the Honky Tonk Man and Adrian Adonis as they go against the Heart Foundation of Brett the Hitman Heart, Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and their partners, the Blue Blazer and Coco Beware. All this plus an eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal with the winner receiving a future Intercontinental Championship match. It's Survivor Series Thanksgiving Night YouTube Got Mark 76. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for sharing your Thanksgiving evening with us here on YouTube. It's Survivor Series, and the opening contest will feature an eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal with the winner getting a future Intercontinental title match. The participants will be the Junkyard Dog, Ace, Cowboy Bob Orton, the Ugandan Giant Kamala, Billy Jack Haynes, Tito Santana, Wild Samoan Sika, Golden Boy Danny Spivey, and Dino Bravo. And fans, I will do my best to call the action here. As Kamala whips Spivey in, Sika trying to throw out Tito Santana. Santana goes up and over. If he gets kicked to the floor, then he will be eliminated. Both feet must touch the ground. And Billy Jack Haynes and Bob Wharton going at it up top. And Dino Bravo takes down the Junkyard Dog. So each of these competitors, I can see winning this contest. You have the size of Sika and Kamala. The strength of Dino Bravo, the Junkyard Dog, and Billy Jack Haynes. And of course, the ring savviness of Cowboy Bob Wharton and the youth and style of Dan Spivey. Former Intercontinental Champion Tito Santana has endurance as well. So any of these competitors can win this contest. We'll see who has what it takes to hold out and challenge Don Morocco for the Intercontinental title match. And fans, we have a huge card lined up for you here tonight at Survivor Series. The main event. The Bobby Heenan family of Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorff, Andre the Giant, King Kong Bundy, and King Harley Race will take on Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake Roberts, Don the Rock Morocco, and newly added member Rowdy Roddy Piper. We also have the Macho Man Randy Savage captaining his team against Ricky the Dragon. Uh, teaming with Ricky the Dragon Steam. Oh, and Kamala gets tossed out of the match by Dino Bravo. And there's that strength by Dino Bravo. Sika has Tito Santana. While Spivey and Bravo try to double team on the Junkyard Dog. Here I am trying to go over the card and people are getting eliminated left and right. And Billy Jack Kane still going at a high knee lift on Bob Orton. So Steamboat will team with Randy Savage, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and the Olympian Ken Patera as they go against Rick Rude, Hercules Hernandez, One Man Gang, and the Natural Butch Reed. And a beautiful neckbreaker by Tito Santana on Dino Bravo. 
Wasika and Junkyard Dog go at it. Oh, and Santana and Spivey going at it. Those two have teamed in recent weeks. And up and over goes Spivey. Can Santana eliminate Spivey? And he does not. Spivey rolls back in. And a belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Orton takes down Billy Jack Haynes. <clears throat> What a back body drop by Billy Jack Haynes and 300 pounds plus of Sika goes up and down. And Bravo and Billy Jack going at it while Dan Spivey recovering at the bottom. Junkyard Dog trying to eliminate Sika. It's going to take more than one person, I think, to eliminate him. What a big right hand takes Junkyard Dog down and Bravo has been eliminated. Dino Bravo has been eliminated from the contest. I did not see who eliminated him. But Bravo has to head back to the dressing room. And Orton and Billy Jack still going at it. Spivey has Sika up. What a test of strength this is. Owen throws out Sika. Dan Spivey eliminates Sika. It's anybody's match now as Spivey has Tino Santana up in a slam and down goes Santana. Junkyard Dog on the verge of eliminating Bob Orton. Orton goes up and over. And Junkyard Dog trying to kick Orton out. And Orton somehow fights his way back. Yeah, Billy Jack Keynes and Tino Santana going at it. And these are pairings we never thought we would see here in the World Wrestling Federation. Fan favorites going at it, but they know what's at stake. And that's an Intercontinental title match. And Santana has Billy Jack Haynes. Over goes Haynes. And Santana trying to kick Haynes out. Dan Spivey aiding Santana, trying to eliminate Billy Jack Haynes. And Bob Orton and Junkyard Dog going at it. Dog has Orton up. Is Junkyard Dog going to eliminate Bob Orton? Orton's fighting for everything he can. And Haynes joining in. And Orton goes up and over. And we have quite the foursome left. We have Junkyard Dog, Billy Jack Haynes, Tino Santana, and Dan Spivey. All four who are fan favorites here in the World Wrestling Federation. And one of them will get a future Intercontinental title match. And a suplex by Santana takes Haynes down temporarily. Junkyard Dog and Tino Santana. These two have teamed in recent weeks in the World Wrestling Federation. Junkyard Dog stomping away on Tino Santana. Tino Santana, the only man left who has held World Wrestling Federation gold. And now JYD picking up Santana. Spivey going, oh, Spivey. Attacking the Junkyard Dog from behind. Again, uncharacteristic. But they know what's at stake. That's a future. Oh, and over the top rope and eliminated is Junkyard Dog. And it's come down to Spivey, Haynes, and Santana. And Santana whipped head first in that top turnbuckle. Haynes on the verge of eliminating Tito Santana. Santana's almost out, and he is. It has come down to Billy Jack Haynes and Dan Spivey. Who will it be? The Golden Boy or Billy Jack? As Billy Jack sets up Dan Spivey. And there's a neck breaker by Billy Jack Haynes. And Spivey goes down. Haynes lining up Spivey. Has him really against the ropes. And clothesline Spivey up and over. And Billy Jack Haynes will receive a future. Intercontinental title match. What a way to open up Survivor Series. Dino Bravo throwing out Kamala. That was 400 pounds. Up and down. But it came down to Billy Jack Haynes and Dan Spivey. And Billy Jack with a clothesline takes out the Golden Boy. Fans, your winner in the opening contest here at Survivor Series, Billy Jack Haynes. We will be right back after this quick timeout with our first of four elimination matches.
it will be the Hart Foundation teaming with Owen Hart and Coco Beware as they take on the Dream Team, adorable Adrian Adonis, and the Honky Tonk Man. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. And the following contests here on Survivor Series will be the Dream Team, Adrian Adonis and the Honky Tonk Man, taking on the Heart Foundation, Coco Beware, and the Blue Blazer. And it will be Brutus Beefcake starting out with Bret Hart. And Beefcake, look at the arrogance of Beefcake not even taking off his sunglasses as it competes in this contest in the Rick of the Eyes and the Hitman. Reversal into the corner goes Beefcake. And Hart going for the sharpshooter, trying to put Beefcake away early. He turns him over. Honky Tonk distracting the referee. But Beefcake in trouble and taps out. And under 30 seconds into the match. And the Hitman has made Beefcake submit to the sharpshooter. And now Bret Hart going at Greg Valentine on the outside floor. Valentine turning the tide, turning over the Hitman. I'm shocked that Brutus Beefcake has been eliminated this early in this contest. Hart ramming Valentine head first into the side of the mat. And the Hitman with a scoop slam into the ring goes Valentine. And that broke up the count. The referee was up to seven before Hart threw Valentine on the edge of the ring. And now Hart picks up Valentine, front face lock. And taking Valentine over to his corner. Whips Valentine into the ropes. Oh, and a stalemate by Valentine. And now into the turnbuckle goes Valentine. And the tag, here comes the anvil. The anvil with a big uppercut to the chest of Valentine. And now Valentine gaining momentum, working the leg of Neidhart. Takes Neidhart down. Setting up Neidhart. Could it be the figure four leg lock? Neidhart gets back to his feet and Valentine sinks in the figure four leg lock. Will they be evened up? Will Neidhart tap out? Valentine really sinking in that figure four leg lock. Neidhart trying to escape it and does. And Valentine staying on top of the anvil. Whoops him into his corner now. Oh, an anvil with a comeback. A kick to the face by Jim the Anvil not hard. A knee to the midsection. And a big clothesline takes Valentine down. The anvil setting up Valentine. Has him up on the shoulder. And a power slam. And down goes Valentine. Goes for the cover, and the Honky Tonk Man breaks up the pinfall. Oh, and Bret Hart with a beautiful belly to back suplex. Up and over goes the Honky Tonk Man. And the Anvil, oh, beautiful maneuver on Valentine. Up and over goes Greg the Hammer. And now Neidhart ties, tags in the Blue Blazer. And the Blue Blazer climbing the top rope. Adonis trying to distract the Blazer. And throws the blazer off the top rope. And Valentine staggering. If he knew where he was, he would go for a pinfall. But blazer back to his feet. And a big right hand by Valentine. A side backbreaker by the blazer. And the blue blazer remains in control. And a beautiful drop kick takes Valentine down. The Blazer going back up top, and again, Adonis distracts the Blazer and throws him on top of Valentine. And again, the Blazer the third time going to the top. And again, Adonis throws the Blazer off. If I'm the Blue Blazer, I'm going up another corner the next time, if there is a next time. And now Valentine tags in Adonis, who... Even though this is the first time he's legally in the match, he's already played an impact 
as the Blazer with a drop kick in the corner takes Adonis down. And now a knee to the back of adorable Adrian Adonis and the Blue Blazer stomping away. And it's almost as if the Blazer heard my advice. He climbs in his corner, allowing Adonis to get back to his feet. And the Blazer with a beautiful maneuver. Pinfall predicament. And the referee distracted by Valentine and Honky Tonk Man. The referee goes for the count. And three. And it's now four on two. The Honky Tonk Man with a big right uppercut by the Blue Blazer. Front face lock on Honky Tonk Man. And the Heart Foundation, Coco Beware, and the Blue Blazer are dominating this contest. Jim the Anvil is going to fly. Are you kidding me? 280 plus pounds across the Honky Tonk Man. And Greg Valentine and the Honky Tonk Man have their work cut out. It is four on two. Owen. Honky Tonk rolls out of the way, but Jim the Anvil is falling out to the floor. And a big chop by the Honky Tonk Man takes the Anvil down. The Honky Tonk Man. Oh, and a kick to the midsection by the Anvil. And a big chop across the throat. Oh, and the trading chops on the outside floor. And a snapmare takeover on the mat and snapping the neck of the anvil is the Honky Tonk Man. Looking, they're not going to be able to eliminate two people at once. They need to just work on one to get this match back in their power. But it's a tall order for Honky Tonk Man and Greg Valentine to come back from a four on two. And this is something we may be seeing all throughout the course of the night. You may see four on one, three on two, three on one action here at the Survivor Series. And the beautiful maneuver takes Bret Hart down. And Honky Tonk Man stomping away on the Hitman. And the Hitman with a reversal takes the Honky Tonk Man down with arm drag. And now the Hitman whipping Honky Tonk into the corner. And a Bulldog out of the corner face first goes the Honky Tonk Man. And I think he's been busted open. He has. The Honky Tonk Man busted open. The Hitman on the second turn the misses the elbow. Honky Tonk Man fighting back. Has the Hitman into the turnbuckle he goes. And an elbow to the face and a crossbody takes Honky Tonk Man down. Honky Tonk desperately needs a tag. He's been busted open, and he's in a world of trouble. And Hart stomping on the back of the Honky Tonk Man. Rolling him over. And up and over goes the Hitman, working the leg of the Honky Tonk. He's working everybody. That arm now. And every body part of the Honky Tonk Man being worked on methodically by the Hitman. Sets up the Honky Tonk Man. Could it be another sharpshooter? The Honky Tonk Man in trouble. The Hitman already made Beefcake submit and Honky Tonk Man submits. And Greg Valentine finds himself four on one. And Valentine gonna fight valiantly here, working the leg of the Hitman. And Valentine, I'll give him credit, he's fighting it. He did not run away, but he is in the ring with four of the toughest here. Has his feet on the ropes, going for the advantage, and the Hitman kicks out. And a big left staggers the Hitman. Front face lock by Valentine, again working the leg of Bret Hart. And that usually is a precursor for the figure four leg lock. And Valentine, working over the Hitman, dragging him up and whipping him into the far turnbuckle. Charges with a clothesline, and the Hitman's in trouble. Now, Valent come on, Valentine. Come on, ref, get in there. He's choking out the Hitman. 
has a count of five and broke the hole. And the Hitman makes a tag and here comes the Blue Blazer. The Blue Blazer with a big clothesline takes Valentine down another clothesline. Takes Valentine down again, the third. And the Blue Blazer making a name for himself here at Survivor Series already eliminated adorable Adrian Adonis. So chalk one up for the Blue Blazer, chalk two up for the Hitman. And there's a pity predicament crucifix. Referee counts one, two, and three. And the Blue Blazer, Coco Beware, who I don't think is tagged into the match at all. And the Heart Foundation defeat the Dream Team, Honky Tonk Man, and Adorable Adrian Adonis, the entire team of Coco, Blue Blazer, and the Heart Foundation are your survivors. And fans, will there be more of this undefeated four-on-one attack as the, the night progresses? We will find out next. As the Intercontinental Tag Team Champions, the Young Stallions, team with the British Bulldogs, as they go against World Tag Team Champions Demolition and the Islanders. Fans, don't go away. We'll be right back with more Survivor Series after this quick timeout. The following contest will feature the Intercontinental Tag Team Champions, the Young Stallions, and the British Bulldogs as they take on the World Tag Team Champions, Demolition, and the Islanders. And it's going to be Axe and Dynamite Kids starting off for their respective teams. It was a recent edition of World Wrestling Federation Magazine on newsstands available right now when the British Bulldogs said that the Young Stallions were better than Demolition. Well, tonight they're going to have a chance to prove it as Axe goes for a cover on Dynamite Kid. And Jim Powers breaks it up and inadvertently takes out the referee while doing so. And let's see if Demolition and the Islanders can resort to dastardly means while the referee is down. They do not. Dynamite Kid whipping Axe into the corner, follow suit. And now running knee strike by Dynamite Kid has Axe in trouble. Dynamite setting up Axe. Could it be that power slam maneuver? He picks up Axe. Has him on his shoulder and down with the power slam. Dynamite Kid. Rolling Axe in the center of the ring. The referee having words with Tama. And Dynamite goes for the cover. And the referee counts. Two and a kick out of two. It may have been the referee's distraction by Tama that saved Axe from being pinned there. And now tags in Davy Boy Smith. And Axe whips Smith into his corner and a cheap shot by Haku. And double team work being done by Axe and Haku. Haku and Tama spent part of this year as the World Tag Team Champions. They defeated the Hart Foundation for those titles earlier this year. And they were dethroned by the Killer Bees. And oh, Haku made David Boy Smith submit. And it's now four on three. And Haku with a snapmare takeover on Paul Roma. So the Islanders have been out of the title picture since losing the titles, but find themselves as the top contender to the Intercontinental Tag Team Championship. And there's a headbutt by Haku on Roma. Another headbutt by Haku. And a third headbutt by Haku, and Paul Roma is in dire straits. And a beautiful power bomb maneuver into a pinning predicament. Two. Oh, and Roma barely able to kick out. Jim Powers was there for the save. 
And the beautiful maneuver by Axe throws Powers up and down. So you'll notice that Mr. Fuji and Bobby Heenan are not at ringside. Managers are not allowed at ringside for Survivor Series. And a headbutt off the second turnbuckle. And that's about the fifth headbutt that Paul Roma has taken in this contest. But the Islanders are managed by Bobby Heenan. The Heenan family is involved in many, many matches here at Survivor Series. Of course, the main event coming up later tonight. We'll have Andre the Giant, King Kong Bundy, Harley Race, and Mr. Wonderful Paul Lohndorf taking on the team of Hulk Hogan, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Don the Rock Morocco. And of course, the next match after this would be Hercules and Rick Rude involved with Slick members, One Man Gang, and Butch Reed. So the Bobby Hina family all over Survivor Series and Smash allowing Roman to get back to his feet. Picks him up, it could be another power slam, and it is! And Smash goes for the cover, Roma makes it to the ropes. Fortunately for Paul Roma, he was near the ropes when Smash landed, and that let Paul Roma just inch his way over and get that foot on the rope to break up the pinfall. And now Roma has Smash, and a power slam of his own! Takes Smash up and down. And again, Tama distracting the referee while Roman goes for the cover. Two, and a kick out. So that's twice now that the Islanders, I'm sorry, that was Haku, that the Islanders distracted the referee while a member of Demolition was about to get pinned. And an uppercut by Smash sends Paul Roman reeling and a knee to the face. And Paul Roma is in desperate need to make a tag. Up and over goes Roma. And Smash follows him out. And the right hand in the midsection. Oh, and a beautiful belly to belly suplex on the floor. And Smash is in control. Paul Roma is in trouble. Oh man, dropped face first into the ring. Paul Roma needs to get out of this match and needs to do so fast. Smash throws him back into the ring and Roma, oh, Roma able to make a tag. And here comes Jim Powers, who's sort of blocked down by Smash. The momentum lasted for about a second as Smash now with the submission maneuver on Jim Powers. And Powers fights his way out. Davy Boy Smith was eliminated quite early in this contest. Haku with the tongue and death grip submitted Davy Boy Smith. And it's been four on three since. And now Powers and Smash fighting it out on the floor. And Smash able to make a tag to his tag team partner, Axe. Who was met by a scoop slam by Jim Powers. And down goes Axe with authority. And now Powers in control, picks up Axe. Has him up on his shoulders. And a Samoan drop, back goes Jim Powers. Powers now, in control, picking up Axe. Well, the fireman's carried by Axe, a reversal, and a reversal by Powers. And now Axe being rammed into the top turnbuckle. Numerous times Axe, his head, goes into that top turnbuckle. Powers is setting him up. What could this be? Picks him up on his shoulders. And a running power slam. Powers goes for the cover. Two and three! And it's now tied, three on three. Now Smash, left in the ring with Powers. Into the turnbuckle goes Smash. And 
And a double team maneuver by Donald McKidd and Jim Powers on Smash. So, the British Bulldogs said it in this month's edition of World Wrestling Federation Magazine. And Jim Powers, oh, and a beautiful maneuver by Donald McKidd, takes Smash up and over. As Jim Powers pinned Axe. And now Smash working over Donald McKidd. And a beautiful slam takes Dynamite down. Two and three. And the number one contenders to the World Tag Team titles have been eliminated. The British Bulldogs are out of this contest. It is now three on two. The Islanders and Smash versus the Young Stallions. And Paul Roman in control takes Smash to the outside. He's following them out. Trading blows on the outside floor as Smash gets thrown back into the ring. Smash trying to make a tag and does. Here comes Tama. And Paul Rome up on the top rope. He leaps and nails Tama with a big red hand chop. Tama's down. Roma picks up Tama. Gorilla press slam up and down goes Tama. And now Roma climbing the top. Could it be that splash? He leaps and he nails him with a splash. He goes for the cover. Referee counts two and three. And it's now two on two. The Young Stallions versus Smash and Haku. One would think that the advantage is in the Stallions' favor as they're the normal tag team, but Smash and Haku are half of two teams. And now Smash working the arm of Paul Roma. Roma does not submit, but the damage has been done. Smash allowing Roma to get back to his feet, picks him up. It could be another running power slam, and it is. Down goes Roma, goes for the cover. And Roma again makes it to the ropes. Oh, and Roma going for a kick to the back. Punch to smash his face. Smash desperately needs to make a tag. And Smash makes a tag, and here comes Haku. Haku in the ring is met by a big right hand. Roma whips Haku into a shoulder block. Haku in trouble. Roma stomping the arm of Haku. Goes for the cover. Referee in position. And a kick out at two by Haku. The Young Stallions defeated their tag team partners, the British Bulldogs, in the tournament final for the first ever Intercontinental Tag Team Championship. It got the respect and earned the respect of the former tag team champions, the British Bulldogs. And the Young Stallions are just that. They are young, up-and-coming talent here in the World Wrestling Federation who many tag teams are gunning for. They want that Intercontinental Tag Team title and a beautiful suplex by Paul Roma on Haku. And Haku is in trouble. Roma picking up Haku. Whoops him into the turnbuckle. And Haku with a reversal. And a big chop into the corner. Now Haku throws out Roma. He could be setting him up. He's in a leap. Is it a headbutt? It is! A headbutt up the second turnbuckle. And Haku allowing Roma to get back to his feet. Could it be that savant kick? Oh, and there it was! Run right across the face! Going for the covers, Haku! save smash with a belly to back suplex on Jim Powers Powers saving his tag team partner from the savant kick from Haku who's now working the leg of Paul Roma and another headbutt Haku with a series of headbutt oh another one 
on Paul Roma. Paul Roma must have taken eight headbutts in this contest from Haku. And now rolls over Roma, and I don't think he's gonna kick out. One, two, and three! It's now two on one. Smash and Haku versus Jim Powers. Powers whipped into the corner. Haku tags in Smash. Double team coming up. Ooh, a big elbow, a double elbow by both Haku and Smash. Smash is setting up Powers. He has him up on his shoulder. Reversal by Powers into a Russian leg sweep. Jim Powers will not go quietly. And he's going to set up Smash. Could it be a power slam of his own? He picks up Smash on his shoulder. Running power slam. Goes for the cover. Referee counts. Two and a headbutt breakup by Haku. Who's met with a big right hand. Reversal throwing Powers in the corner. Oh, Haku. Up on the second turbo but it was a headbutt on Jim Powers, but splash smash at the same time. Try saying that five times fast. Smash going for the cover. Two, and a kick out of two by Powers. Oh, Haku nailed a headbutt off the second turnbuckle, leaping over Smash, nailing Powers with his head, but his body came full force on Smash. Sacrificing his partner to do damage to his opponent. And now Powers whipping Smash into the turnbuckle. And now Powers setting up Smash on the top turnbuckle. Could it be that superplex? Powers eyeing up Smash. Oh, Smash reverse with a kick to the head. And now Smash again. Picks up in a running power slam. His power's gonna kick out of this one. Two and three. And Smash and Haku are your sole survivors in this contest. A valiant effort by Jim Powers, but Haku and Smash were just too much. But the real story here is that the number one contenders to the World Tag Team titles, the British Bulldogs, were the first to be eliminated from this contest. So one would think that the World Wrestling Federation Championship Committee and President Jack Tunney specifically will be looking at who the number one contenders for the World Tag Team titles should be. And fans, Ricky Steamboat, Randy Savage, Hacksaw Duggan, and Ken Patera are coming up next as they take on the one-man gang, Butch Reed, Rick Rude, and Hercules Hernandez. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. And welcome back to Survivor Series. Our following contest will be the Macho Man, Randy Savage, teaming with Ricky Steamboat, Ken Patera, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan as they go against Ravishing Rick Rude, Hercules Hernandez, One Man Gang and the Natural Butch Reed, and here they are making their way to the ring. They are representing the Heenan family as Hercules Hernandez coming out first. The following contest of course, Hercules is Hernandez, part of the Heenan man. family. Making his way to the ring. What a year it's been. Florida. For the Heenan family. They'll have their work cut off for them later on in our main event tonight. But Hercules Hernandez moving up the ranks, if you will, here in the World Wrestling Federation. And this man, ravishing Rick Rude, near the top of his game as well. And there's the natural Butch Reed who found himself in quite the feud with the Macho Man Randy Savage this year. 
And that feud is still going on to this day. It has involved him teaming with the one-man gang and the Macho Man teaming with Hacksaw Duggan. It's been one-on-one. It's, now it's in Survivor Series four-on-four. Four. And then after Butch Reed was going to use the Macho Man as a stepping stone to the Intercontinental or World Heavyweight title. And the Macho Man took issue with that. And this feud is going on several months now. And one would think that the winner of this match might just end the feud. If it comes down to Butch Reed and Macho Man Randy Savage. But where the natural Butch Reed goes, this man is sure to be nearby. And that would be the one-man gang. pounds well I'm a buck 50 that guy is big strong and tough and he is the enforcer of this group coming out last in the introductions and his opponents will have their hands full here he is making his way to the ring. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Weighing in at 270 pounds, Jim Duggan. The pride of Glen Falls, New York, makes his way to the ring. for Ken Patera, the Olympic strongman. Earlier in the year, thought he had the Intercontinental title won by defeating Ravishing Rick Rude. That match was on Primetime Wrestling. We invite you to go back to YouTube and catch it out, uh, check it out. It was in August of this year, the week before the main event, or the big event, excuse me, the big event. Bobby Heenan rang the timekeeper's bell and Ken Patera let go of the full Nelson aid locked in on Ravishing Rick Rude thinking he had won the title. Bobby Heenan ringing the bell and that feud between Rick Rude and Ken Patera has taken a turn up a notch here in the World Wrestling Federation. And of course the former Intercontinental Champion Macho Man Randy Savage. Macho Man started getting the cheers of the fans here in the WWF earlier this year. And he has not looked back. He has been winning matches at a much higher rate and pace. And he says it's because the fans are silently behind him. And that's something I never thought I would hear the Macho Man say a year ago. Some fans here are booing the Macho Man because they notice that Miss Elizabeth is not joining him at ringside. And, well, if I'm going to boo the Macho Man, that would be one reason as well. And rounding out their team, the fire-breathing dragon, Ricky Steamboat. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat! 
There are rumors circulating here in the World Wrestling Federation that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's contract with the World Wrestling Federation is set to expire soon. He is not sure what his future plans are going to be. He has stated that he has never received a world title opportunity. So one would think if he decides to stay here, that he would set Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf or whomever the world champion would be in his sights. But that makes for a very interesting contest here at Survivor Series. The introduction is made. The referee calls for the bell and away we go. It's going to be Hercules with a big clothesline on Hacksaw Duggan and Savage with a cheap shot. Hercules setting up Duggan. What's he have in mind? And a big right hand. And here comes that torture rack backbreaker. And Hercules has it locked in. Is Duggan going to tap? That would be lightning quick. Hercules. Oh, and Duggan is able to escape, but barely. And that would have been lightning fast if Hercules had submitted Axel Duggan. And now Hercules staying on top of Duggan. Takes him to his corner and rams him face first into the top turnbuckle. Tags in the natural Butch Reed. Drop toe hold and another one dropped by the natural. And now the natural setting up Hacksaw Duggan for a maneuver. Has him. Up. Oh, it's a Texas pile driver and nails Duggan. So Duggan's been in the torture rack and pile driven by Butch Reed. Is Duggan going to be eliminated? Referee goes for the count and Steamboat breaks it up. Well, the forearm by the Hercules to the Steamboat. Well, and all four men in the ring against Butch Reed, who wisely rolls out of the ring. And now Duggan, whipping Reed into the turnbuckle, follows with a clothesline from the back. And now Duggan setting up Reed. Duggan nails that football clothesline, takes Reed down. Duggan dragging Reed to the center of the ring. Goes for the cover, could this be it? Could Reed be eliminated? Two and a breakup by the gang. Oh, gang and Sav oh, Savage inadvertently taking out Duggan. That was clearly a mistake. But Duggan's down, and Reed is going to capitalize. Savage was so hell-bent on getting at your uh, Reed that he, Reed moved out of the way, and Savage inadvertently bulldogged Hacksaw Duggan. And now Rude back in the ring, and luckily for Hacksaw, he wasn't pinned. I think he'll be able to look at the replay and see it was an accident. But in the meantime, whipping Rude into the turnbuckle, and charges full force with a clothesline. And now Hacksaw pulling Rude from out of the corner and dropping Rude on his back. Duggan setting up Rude. He nails Rude with the clothesline. The football clothesline takes Rude down. Goes for the cover. Referee position. Two and three. And Rick Rude has been eliminated. And I would think that's quite an upset that Ravishing Rick Rude was the first wrestler eliminated in this contest. And now Reed and Savage going at it. It's been a bloody violent feud for the better part of this year. Can they solve it tonight in Survivor Series? We'll find out. Savage with a black brick on Reed. And now Savage climbing up to the top and Hercules is gonna throw Savage off the top. And both Reed and Savage are down. Both men getting back to their feet and it's Reed with an early advantage. And Macho Man fires back. Whipping Reed into the turnbuckle. Charged with a clothesline. And Reed is in trouble. Butch Reed attacked, made it personal in the summer of this year by attacking the Macho Man's brother, Leaping Lanny Poffo, and now Savage climbing the top rope. Could it be that elbow drop? He's setting him up. 
Savage leaps and nails the elbow. Goes for the cover. Could Reed be eliminated next? Two. And oh, Hercules saving it at the last second. Oh, and a belly to back suplex by Campatera. Takes Hercules down in this match. For the time being, anyway. That's Savage in the corner. Allowing Reed to get back up, but not quite. Knocks him back down. Oh, Savage nailed the elbow. Was going to finally pin Butch Reed. A beautiful hip toss by the Macho Man. That would have ended this feud with an exclamation point. Savage staying on top of Butch Reed. I find it ironic that Butch Reed wanted to use the Macho Man as a stepping stone, yet hasn't challenged Don Morocco for the Intercontinental title, at least that we know of. And a suplex by the Macho Man takes Reed up and down. And we all know Don Morocco is a fighting champion as he Reed makes a tag. Here comes Hercules. And a big forearm takes the Macho Man down. A clothesline takes Savage down again. And Hercules now. Oh, Savage reverses into a neckbreaker. And down goes Hercules. And now Savage climbing back up to the top. And this time, the one-man gang shows Macho Man. Off the top rope. Macho Man should be careful which top turnbuckle he climbs up. Makes the tag, and here comes Steve Oat with a beautiful drop kick to Hercules. And Hercules whipping Steve Oat into his corner and follows with a big clothesline, taking Steve Oat down. And drops a leg across the throat of the dragon, and Hercules is in control. And I spoke too soon. Arm drag takeover by Ricky Steve Oat with a big knee to the face, and Steve Oat in control. We mentioned earlier, Steamboat's contract with the World Wrestling Federation ends. We don't know the exact date, but we do know it's coming up within the next couple months. And one has to wonder what the next move will be for the Dragon as he takes Hercules down with a clothesline. And a beautiful maneuver snapping the neck of Hercules Hernandez. And Ricky Steamboat. Picking up Hercules. Sets him up for a beautiful slam. And Hercules slammed down, almost like a power slam, by Steamboat. Now Steamboat. Steamboat should have climbed the top rope. And Butch Reed, oh, and Reed knocks over Steamboat. And Steamboat, though, back to his feet. Hercules still on his back. And Steamboat stomping away on Hercules. to the lower back by Ricky Steamboat stomping away on Hercules Hernandez Steamboat tags in Duggan and Duggan going back to work on Hercules these two men started the match and now they're back in the ring again Ooh, Duggan charged but was met with an elbow by Hercules and now Hercules oh beautiful slam takes Duggan down and Hercules Looking for admiration from the fans. Not sure he's going to get it. And stomping the way on Hacksaw Jim Duggan is the mighty Hercules with a knee to the back. And a reversal by Duggan into the turnbuckle goes Hercules. And now Duggan slamming. It looks like head first into the turnbuckle goes Hercules. Oh, Hercules, it looked like he pulled the hair, taking Duggan down. And now Hercules has Duggan up. And a beautiful fall away slam. Has Duggan in the center of the ring. And he goes for the cover. And Macho Man breaks up the pinfall. Oh, and Reed now. With Macho Man, again, this has been personal. Reed has the Macho Man choking him out from behind. And Savage to his knees. Hercules whipped into the referee. The referee goes down. Hercules reversing, meets an elbow by Duggan. The referee finally getting back to his feet. 
Duggan whipping Hercules into his turnbuckle. Tags in the Olympia strongman Ken Patera. Double team move coming up. Oh, and throws him hard into the top turnbuckle. Ken Patera over. Met with a foot of Hercules in the face. And now a front face lock by Hercules now working the leg of Hercules Hernandez as Ken Patera. And Hercules able to tag in one man gang who shoulder blocks Ken Patera down. Missed with that one. And Patera whipping one man gang into the turnbuckle. Follows suit with a splash in the corner. And Ken Patera in control for the time being. And now stomping away at one man gang in the corner. That's the one way to keep this big man down is to kick him when he's down. And now Patera going for a submission maneuver. But one man gang had his arm tied up in the ropes. And now Patera working the arm of the gang. You take away one of those weapons, that, that big left hand of one man gang. And a forearm across the throat, a knee to the back, and Ken Patera is all over the one man gang here. Patera falls with another splash in the corner. One man gang is in trouble. He has not mounted a lot of offense here since being tagged in. And now up and over the top rope goes Patera, beautiful leg drop. One man gang's head was draped over that bottom rope and Ken Patera, a beautiful maneuver over the top with a leg, uh, leg drop. The back of one man gang's head. And now a backbreaker by Ken Patera takes one man gang down. And again, now working the right arm. Stops on the right arm of one man gang. And Patera setting up the one man gang. Could it be that fool Nelson? He has it locked in. And the one man gang with a one man gang tap. Patera has it locked in. The fool Nelson and gang can't escape. Is Gang gonna submit? He does not. He breaks the hold. And a beautiful maneuver by Matera takes Gang down. Desperately tries to make a tag and does. Here comes Reed. Reed, oh, Reed with a beautiful axe handle takes Matera down. Big clothesline. Matera goes down again. Misses with a clothesline this time. And Matera has Reed up in a backbreaker of his own. Matera picking up Reed. Whipping him into the turnbuckle. Follow suit and misses with a splash this time. Reed whipping Patera into his turnbuckle. The splash of Patera hit twice on one man gang. He missed on Butch Reed. And now a drop toe hold followed by an elbow by Hercules. Hercules staying on top of Patera. And a beautiful sidewalk slam takes Ken Patera down. And Hercules stopping away. Picks up Patera, whoops him into his turnbuckle. Oh, and here comes a double team maneuver. A knee to the midsection and Patera having a hard time breathing. Hercules has him up in a power slam down. Goes Ken Patera. Hercules goes for the cover. Could they be evening the odds? Two and a breakup by the Macho Man. Oh, Macho Man. Coming at it with Hercules and the one-man gang. Gang has him up for a suplex. Up and down goes the Macho Man. Hercules and Patera, the legal men in the ring. As Patera throws Hercules up and over the top rope. Patera needs desperately to make a tag. He's been in this contest for a long. Oh, a beautiful kick by Patera. A spin kick takes Hercules down. And Reed now with an oh a gut buster on the floor to Ken Patera. Hercules almost out on his feet, shaking the cobwebs, picks up Patera. Oh, and a fez press takes Patera down. Referees counts up to six. And Hercules throws Patera back into the ring. Patera makes a tag, and here comes the Macho Man. The Macho Man with a big clothesline takes Hercules down. Another clothesline, Hercules goes down again, a third clothesline misses. 
And Hercules with a side backbreaker. And the Macho Man's down. Hercules tagging in Butch Reed. And Butch Reed looking to gain momentum against the Macho Man. It's been a back and forth feud for most of this year. Picking up Savage, a Gorilla Press Slam. Up goes Savage and down goes Savage. Stomach first. Well, that's great, Butch. Celebrate, but you haven't pinned him yet. As he picks up the Macho Man. And a reversal by Savage. Reed in trouble. Savage turns him around. And whips Butch Reed across the ring. Savage calling him out. Tags in Ken Patera. And it's going to be a double team maneuver. Reed off the ropes and a beautiful flapjack by Ken Patera and the Macho Man. Patera sending up Butch Reed. Could we be seeing another full Nelson? He has him. He has Reed locked in the full Nelson. Will Reed submit? A competitor. Reed has given up. It is now down to four on two. The entire team of Ken Patera, Randy Savage, Jim Duggan, and Ricky Steamboat is now facing one man gang and Hercules. Oh, and one man gang misses with a splash. Patera whoops gang into the turnbuckle. Savage prematurely climbed the ring. And a big knee to the back of the one man gang. I think Savage. Well, I don't know, Savage might be a little upset that he wasn't the one who pinned Reed, but he has to be happy that his teammate did. Patera goes for the cover, his feet on the ropes, two and three! And some of Ken Patera's past of being managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan coming to play here. Oh, and the sidewalk slam by Hercules takes Patera down. It's four on one. Can Hercules mount a comeback? He's pinning Patera, two and three! He takes out Ken Patera, now three on one. Macho Man with the knee to the midsection. Hercules kicking away at the Macho Man. Wait a second, he's setting up the Macho Man. Could it be that torture rack backbreaker? He has Savage up. Oh, and Savage is in trouble. Is Savage gonna submit? It's three on one, it could be two on one. A competitor. And Savage submits to the backbreaker. He couldn't escape or make it to the ropes. And Hercules is coming back. And I spoke too soon a belly to back suplex by Steamboat taking Hercules down. And now Steamboat climbing the top rope. Could he be setting him up for that crossbody? Steamboat, the dragon flies and nails him with a chop off the top rope. Steamboat dragging Hercules to the center of the ring. Him and Jim Duggan are left against Hercules. Can he go for the cover? Hercules is not getting up. Hercules has been busted open. Steamboat goes for the pinfall. One, two, and three. And Ricky Steamboat and Hacksaw Jim Duggan are the sole survivors for their team. What a back and forth contest. Hercules was down four to one and pinned Ken Patera and made Macho Man submit to the backbreaker. So Hercules turning some heads here at Survivor Series on the losing effort, but really impressing me for what it's worth by eliminating Ken Patera and the Macho Man Randy Savage. And Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Ricky Steamboat are your sole Survivor's fans. Our following contest will be the main event. As the Heenan family takes on Hogan, Roberts, Piper, and Morocco. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And fans, it's main event time here at Survivor Series. The Bobby Heenan family takes on Hulk Hogan, Intercontinental Champion Don Morocco, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Rowdy Roddy Piper. And here they are making their way to the ring. King Harley Race the first member of the Heenan family. The Heenan family had quite a showing in the earlier contest. 
as Haku was one of the survivors in the tag title, excuse me, the tag team Survivor Series contest. Rick Rude and Hercules fared okay in their contest. And here Bobby Heenan looking to end the night on top as Harley Race, King Kong Bundy, and Andre the Giant will do everything they can to protect the World Wrestling Federation Champion, Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. And here they are making their way to the ring. King Kong Bundy. From Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing in at I doubt that at any point tonight in this four-man elimination match, that King Kong Bundy will want to ask for a five count. This is the kind of match with elimination rules that a three or four on one is going to be to your best advantage. So I would imagine King Kong Bundy will settle for the standard three count if or when he is put in that pinning predicament. And, from and there's Andre the Giant. You notice how the members of the Hina family have been introduced thus far. King Harley Race, a world-traveled professional wrestler, made his name all over the country, ended up here in the World Wrestling Federation, the king of the ring. And then King Kong Bundy, a big guy in stature and size, most people's main threat only to be followed by Andre the Giant. So if you get through Harley Race, you have to go through King Kong Bundy. If you're able to survive that, you have to go through Andre the Giant just to get to this guy. Mr. Wonderful Paul Lohndor, the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion. And their partner from Tampa, Florida. And he knows it. He knows he has some of the toughest guys. I mean, you throw in Rick Rude and Hercules Hernandez and the Islanders. The list can go on. Mr. Perfect, an up-and-comer here in the World Wrestling Federation. The, 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 the names of those protecting the World Championship is a who's who of this business. And every single time Mr. Wonderful puts that title on the line, he finds a way to secure victory. Well, the title's not on the line tonight, but his health is, for sure. You look across that ring, and of the four opponents, there are three that want to lay claim to that world championship. You have the Intercontinental Champion, Don Morocco, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and of course, Hulk Hogan, who Paul Orndorff gave one rematch to, one rematch since winning the title back in March of this year. And that rematch came in August at the big event. And by hook and by crook, Mr. Wonderful pulled off the victory. And Jack Tunney said he fulfilled his duties as champion. Does not have to defend against Hulk Hogan again. Rowdy Piper has stepped up as the number one contender. He's been unsuccessful in getting that championship away from Paul Lundorf as well. And here he is, the new number one contender making his way to the ring. And his from Glasgow, One of the last minute fill-ins for this lineup, Jake Roberts encountered Roddy Piper backstage asking him to be part of this tag team. And Roddy Piper, well, Jake the Snake for that, Rob, uh, for that matter too, is not somebody who has a lot of friends here in the World Wrestling Federation. More of a loner, has more enemies than anything. But they needed a fourth member, and he needed somebody to get his hands on Mr. Wonderful. And of course, being attacked by Harley Race and King Kong Bundy, wants to get his hands on them as well. So Roddy Piper joins Jake the Snake Roberts, Don the Rock of Morocco, and Hulk Hogan. And as we saw earlier tonight, Billy Jack Haynes, won the eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal, he will get a future Intercontinental title match. So one would think 
that if the Heenan family does any damage to Don Morocco, that's going to help Billy Jack Haynes, of all people, regain or gain the Intercontinental title. So a lot to look out for, even though Billy Jack Haynes is not involved in this match, Don Morocco has to be very careful because that challenge, even at 100%, is going to be a tough one for The Rock. And the fans here start to rise. They know who's coming next. And here they rise to the immortal Hulk Hogan, making his way to the ring. And he wants to get his hands on everybody. He's declared war on the entire Heenan family for protecting Paul Orndorff. And he has been wrestling members of the Hina family all over the country. And he's begging Jack Tunney what he has to do to get another world title opportunity at Paul Orndorff. And one would think that his showing here tonight may have some influence on that. So we thank you for tuning in, fans. It's been an eventful night so far. And the main event here, Jake Roberts starting off with Harley Race and the arm drag takeover. Jake goes down. Race has Roberts in the front face lock, setting off for a shoot flush. Roberts blocks it. Again, Race open over goes Jake Roberts. And Race. Race is going up top. Don't tell me it's going to be the flying headbutt. Jake Roberts in trouble in the early going. This match isn't even 30 seconds long. And Race hits a headbutt off the top rope. Race goes for the cover. They can be down one, one, two, and three. And the Bobby Hina family off to a great start here in the main event. Morocco tagging in kicks. DDT's Race. Oh, the fast and furious action here in the main event. Morocco setting up Race. He has him for the Hawaiian Crunch Tombstone Pile Driver. And he nails Race with it. Could they be evening the odds? Morocco goes for the cover, distracted by Bundy, the referee. Goes for the counter, Race makes it to the ropes. Oh, man. It's four on three, and this is the numbers game that we spoke about all throughout the night. And the Bobby Hina family, four on three now. As Morocco, staying on top of Race. Goes for a kick, Race blocks it and takes Morocco down. And Race might be looking for a tag, getting that tooth. Oh, and here comes the big guy, Andre the Giant in the ring. And Morocco, oh, Morocco going right after Andre, drags him down. If there are any guys here in this match, or any match, that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Andre the Giant, it's Don Morocco and Hulk Hogan. Morocco picking up Andre. Front face lock by Morocco. And now dragging Andre to his corner. Whips Andre into the ropes. The referee falls and trips. The referee is down. Whipping Andre into the turnbuckle. Morocco tags in the Hulkster and the referee getting back to his feet. Hogan on the second turnbuckle nails the arm of Andre. A big forearm to the back and Hogan and Andre going at it. These two have been battling all over the country. Oh, and a stalemate. These two know each other so well. An abdominal stretch with a grasp at the midsection of Andre the Giant. The referee's asking if Andre wants to submit, and he does not. Hogan goes for the cover instead. Referee counts one, two, and a kick out of two by Andre the Giant. And that kick to the back seems to have woken Andre the Giant. Scoops up Hogan and a backbreaker takes Hogan down. Andre now taking Hogan to the center of the ring. And he's gonna drop that elbow! We could be down two! Andre, two, and throw a kick out at the last second by Hogan! His team could have been down four to two! And Andre staying on top of the Hulkster! 
Things are not looking good for Hogan. Oh, and a roll up from behind. I spoke too soon and a kick out at one. Hogan with a big right hand and a kick takes Andre down. Hogan climbing with a second turnbuckle and thinks otherwise. Communicating with Piper to it, step aside and nails an elbow across the leg of Andre the Giant. That's one attack. The guy can't walk, he can't defend himself. And now Morocco tagged back in. Working the arm of Andre. So Hogan working the leg, Morocco working the arm. And that's how you gotta take care of it. Oh, and Andre reverses, oh, and slaps Morocco. Oh, and a shoulder block takes Morocco down. That is what you need to do against Andre the Giant. You take away his legs, you take away his weapons, his arms. He still has that massive head, that headbutt can do damage. We've seen several opponents busted open to do an Andre the Giant headbutt. But Andre in control now over Morocco, who reverses it and takes Andre down. And you've noticed that Mr. Wonderful has not been in this contest yet. The Heenan family protecting Orndorff and a big clothesline in the corner by Morocco. And Orndorff, I think Orndorff wants to get in this contest. I think he wants to get his hands on these guys too. But he, oh, and Morocco has a tongue and death grip. Is Andre gonna submit? The tongue and breath death grip locked in by Morocco. Oh, and Andre fights his way out. Oh, and a big clothesline by Morocco takes Andre down. Andre needs to make a tag, or this is gonna be short work for Andre the Giant. And Morocco setting up, no way! A Hawaiian crunch tombstone on Andre, downs him, and Andre's been busted open. Morocco goes for the cover, and Andre's gonna be eliminated, and Bundy makes the save. And here comes Piper to get his hands on Bundy, but Morocco takes charge of Bundy. Piper. Wanted to get his hands on Andre and Morocco instead. So this is the lack of teamwork that the Morocco, Hogan, Piper, and Roberts team faces as the Hina family's a unit. Morocco has Bundy or Andre up and a beautiful neck breaker by Hogan. Those two men so strong are the only men in the Federation who I think can manhandle Andre like that. And now Race tags back in. Hogan going to attack, but Race reverses it. Hogan with a series of red hands, has race. Hard whip into the ropes and a big boot by Hogan. And Andre's on the floor, Hogan going for the leg drop and he nails race with it. Goes for the cover. And the referee counts and Orndorff breaks it up. Orndorff doesn't want that four on three advantage to go away. Goes for the cover again and again. Orndorff in there to break it up. Piper gets his hands on Orndorff. Piper with an atomic drop and Hogan going after Orndorff. Orndorff putting himself in trouble as every man left in this match wants to get his hands on him. And Orndorff wisely going to the outside. Hogan with a snapmare takeover by Race. Goes for the cover. Referee counts one, two, and oh, a breakup by Andre. So the 403 attack and the Russian legs with by Piper, who's had enough. He has yet to be in this contest officially, and Hogan with a body slam on Race. Drops the leg on Race again. Andre broke up the pinfall last time, he's on the outside. The referee goes for the cover. Two, and three, that was three on three. They've evened the odds. And Bundy now in the ring. Hogan, whipping Bundy into the ropes. Up and over goes King Kong Bundy. Oh, fans, what an explosive first 10 minutes of this contest. Jake Roberts was eliminated less than a minute in with a headbutt by King Race off the top rope. They evened the match by eliminating Race with a leg drop by Hogan, and here we are, three on three. Into the turnbuckle goes Bundy. Hogan follows suit with a big clothesline in the corner. Hogan staying on top of Bundy. Bundy again, up and over the top rope. There are very few people that can manhandle King Kong Bundy, let alone Andre the Giant. But Don Morocco and Hulk Hogan, two of the more powerful men, alongside of Hercules Hernandez, who of course is a Bobby Heenan member, fa uh, family member. Ooh, a 
clothesline from behind by Bundy. Hogan makes the tag, and here comes Piper. Piper looking for revenge, and a big smash takes Bundy down. It was Bundy and Race who attacked Roddy Piper backstage that made Piper want to join the team. And now Bundy, Piper going back and forth with each other. And a big right hand takes Bundy down. And Piper embracing the crowd, something he's not used to here in the World Wrestling Federation. And Piper picking up Bundy, going back to work. Going for a slam, but Bundy backs out of that. And a big clothesline takes Piper down. And Bundy now stomping away on Roddy Roddy Piper. And King Kong Bundy made it known he was not happy he had to work on Thanksgiving night. He said the Bundy household has lots of turkey, chicken, and pumpkin pie. So he said he wanted to make short work of Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, and Don Morocco and get back to his family and eat food. And Bundy has Piper. And a big splash into the corner and Bundy's one step closer to getting that food and a big splash. Goes for the cover on Piper. Two and three. And Piper has been eliminated again. Bundy. Bundy wants food. He's hungry. Picks up Hogan into the ring. Bundy whipping Hogan into the turnbuckle. And now he's challenging Hogan. And we've all seen Hogan come back from some insurmountable odds. You do not want to challenge him. And now he tags in Andre. And the two biggest men in the World Wrestling Federation are double teaming the Hulkster. Andre now picking up Hogan. Going for a red hand and a slap by Hogan. A kick to the midsection. How many people do you know open hand slap Andre the Giant? There's not many, but Hulk Hogan's won. And flexing now to the fans here. In Connecticut, tags in Morocco. It's Morocco and Hogan, it's three on two. You have two of the biggest, toughest men in the World Wrestling Federation, in all of wrestling for that matter. And the World Heavyweight Champion against the Intercontinental Champion and the man who, who, who ran the Federation for several years before losing the championship. One of the most dominated forces in World Wrestling Federation history, Hulk Hogan. And now Andre has Morocco and throws him into the, oh my gosh, into the ring post. Referees counts up to four and Hogan coming to Morocco's aid with a kick to the midsection. Referees counts up to five. Morocco and Andre had to get back into the ring, but at this case, Hogan would take an Andre count out if Morocco can get back in. Count is up to seven, and Andre throws Morocco back into the ring. Andre follows suit. And Morocco whipping Andre into the turnbuckle, follows with a big clothesline in the corner. Morocco again is one of the few men, I think, alongside of Hulk Hogan, who stature-wise can keep up with Andre the Giant. A lot of other wrestlers like Jake Roberts or Roddy Piper would use their size to duck and get out of situations, but these guys are powerful. And Morocco again with a tongue and death grip. And Andre the Giant has submitted to the tongue and death grip. And Morocco is even the odds. It's two on two. Into the ring, finally, is Paul Orndorff. And a DDT by Morocco. Goes for the cover. Referee counts one and a kick out of one. Orndorff wanted to get into this match. I'm not sure Bobby Heenan is happy with that theory. And Morocco has him set up for the, oh, the, the reversal. And then Mor Morocco is hit with his own finishing maneuver. Orndorff nails the Hawaiian Crunch Tombstone Pile Driver on Don Morocco. And now Orndorff standing above Don Morocco has him set up. Could we be seeing the Pile Driver? And it is. He's setting him up. And Orndorff nails Morocco, the Intercontinental Champion. Nailed with a Pile Driver by the World Champion Paul Orndorff. Dragging Morocco back to the center of the ring. Orndorff going for the cover, the referee counts. Hogan trying to make the save, but not in time. And Morocco's been eliminated as two on one. King Kong Bundy and Paul Orndorff versus Hulk Hogan. Hogan whipping Orndorff into the ropes. Big clothesline takes Orndorff down. Hogan. 
up in the way. Orndorff wisely rolls out of the ring. Back into the ring goes Orndorff. And Orndorff whipping Hogan into his turnbuckle. Could we be seeing a double team maneuver and a big forearm smash into the corner? Hogan goes down. Orndorff in control. And a short arm clothesline. We know what's coming up next. It was that short arm clothesline when Paul Orndorff turned his back on Hulk Hogan. And now Orndorff waiting for Hogan. It's almost as if he's waiting for him to get back up. I'm not sure I understand this logic. Bundy's telling Orndorff to go after him. But Orndorff wants Hogan back up. Maybe he's tired of people saying that he can't defeat Hulk Hogan. Goes up for a power driver backdrop. Orndorff went for a power driver. Hogan on top. And Orndorff makes it to the ropes. So I think that's the competitor inside Paul Orndorff that he wants to compete. But Bobby Heenan and his family want to protect him. And a big boot by Hogan. Hogan going for the leg. And he nails it. He drops the leg. Going for the cover. And Bundy breaks up the pinfall. And oh, I think Orndorff would have kicked out anyway. So we are seeing someone, Hogan, going after Bundy. But Bundy with a big headbutt by Hulk to Hogan takes Hogan down. We are seeing Paul Orndorff wanting to be dare I say a fighting champion he wants to go into these guys but the Heenan family is trying to protect them as if they don't have much faith in them I'm not sure I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth but that's what it looks like from from my perspective and now Hogan going after Bundy wisely goes after Paul Orndorff and Orndorff with a kick to the midsection and Hogan in trouble Orndorff setting him up for the pile driver could be he nails Hogan and he even spikes Hogan with the pile driver And Orndorff spikes Hogan with a pile driver. If he covers Hogan, it could be all over. Orndorff goes for the cover. The referee counts. Two and three. And Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff has eliminated both the Intercontinental Champion and Hulk Hogan to win this contest for his team. And how's that for confidence if you're the World Heavyweight Champion? eliminating two of your top contenders back to back. And Bobby Heenan in the dressing room must be smiling and happy. He gets the winner's purse tonight in the main event at Survivor Series. But more importantly, Paul Orndorff defeats two of his top contenders back to back. And there are your winner's fans of Bobby Heenan family. We thank you so much for tuning in tonight to YouTube Thanksgiving night. I'm Gunmark76. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you next time.